Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Rai Carneiro and I want to give you an introduction about .NET Aspire. If you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel and like the video and let's move on. Well, .NET Aspire is quite new and is still in preview, but we can expect a lot of good things coming soon. In case you don't know, .NET Aspire is a cloud-ready stack for building observable, production-ready and distributed apps. Usually, when developing or creating cloud-native applications, we need to establish connections with diverse services like databases, storage, caching solutions, messaging providers, and some other web services. And also, I think it's very nice to clarify with you what is exactly cloud-native, what is the meaning of cloud-native, in case you don't know. Well, in short words, cloud-native is an approach to building and running applications that exploit the advantage of the cloud computing delivery model. If you don't know, the cloud computing delivery model is all about provisioning resources for you in the fast way as possible in the most manageable way. And that's the purpose of the cloud computing, delivering infrastructure and services as fast as possible with the best solutions possible. So cloud natives is really how about you create applications that are uh, created and deployed and not a specific, not a specific where it is deployed. Saying that it refers to apps that are based on microservices, and these uh, apps uh, they are usually dependent on some specific architecture technologies. For instance, I don't know .NET, Node.js, or something like that. And sometimes as well, they are dependent on platforms. But just talking about. Uh, what is or what are cloud native applications is not enough, right? There are some benefits behind it, and I will give you some example. For instance, we can have, uh, as I mentioned, flexibility. And I mention flexibility in the cloud because it's going to let you deploy, repeat, and redeploy resources fast and easily whenever and as long as you need to do that again. And this flexibility makes it simple to experiment and implement in the cloud. Another reason is that you can automate things and cloud native applications, they are built on the idea that the architecture is a code and have a highly automated process. So you got to have, you need to think about having DevOps process in places or any sort of automation that will allow you to do the deployment in an automatic and fashion way. And for that, you need to define some portion of automation and how to do that the best way. And third, and last but not least, the efficiency. That's a good benefit because cloud native solutions, they will allow you to access and monitor every process with ease. Uh, they use usually the infrastructure as a code approach, and that's a model that will automate several deployments and operational tasks for you. And that's where the .NET Aspire comes with good hand because the purpose of .NET Aspire is to simplify the process of establishing connections and configuring interactions among these service types. Um, I will walk you through this quick start guide and we will instruct you on creating the solution using the .NET Aspire Starter Application Template that you can find also on the .NET documentation. And before we get started, let me mention that in order to do this, you need to have .NET 8 installed in your PC. Okay, so go to Microsoft website on .NET page, and download the SDK and also the runtime for .NET 8. You may also need, in case you don't have, you need to have the Visual Studio 2022. In this case, I'm using Visual Studio Community 2022 preview with .NET 8. Okay, but let's get started, right? Let me show you some capabilities that we have here. Well, we have here Visual Studio. And the first thing you need to do after installing is go file new project and then you can search for Aspire. And by doing that, you're going to see that we have a prompt here with two options, .NET Aspire application and .NET Aspire starter application. I'm going to find and select these .NET Aspire starter application because I just want to show you the basics and also uh, what is behind the scene. I already did it, so I'm going to go to Solution Explorer, going to expand here, and I want to focus on these four projects that we have here. 
Um, the first one here is an API service, nothing more, nothing less than an API service to provide some information, some data. We also have this Aspire uh, app one the web that is a web application we uh, using Blazor. And the magic here, the nice thing is this .NET Aspire offers orchestration capabilities to facilitate the configuration of the connections and interactions among various components of your application. So within the application model, this project here, the app host, it's going to incorporate the two services that we have, the API service and also the web service here. So if we open here and we go to program.cs, you're going to find that we have this piece of code here that is pretty much creating and assigning a variable API service and adding the project within this DLL here and naming this um, project as API service. Okay, so the reason for doing this is for doing service discovery, right? Because we can use API service later to reference this API project. And also, uh, this is adding more capabilities here and adding another project here that is the web front end. And you can change this name for whatever you want to do, for whatever name you want. But just, um, just understand that we, what we are doing here is we are adding this name and this name is going to be reference for this web project, right? So as I mentioned, this is the magic be behind what's happening here because .NET Aspire is offering the orchestration capability here. So we can have the facilitation of the configuration, connections and interacting with APIs, with cache and furthermore. Um, then you can check that we have some service defaults here and I'm gonna go ahead and open it as well. So let me open these extensions. What is happening here is that we have this class that is named extensions because we are adding here some dependencies from, from some packages that are going to be used, especially the open telemetry, some resiliency renderers, etc. And you can see that we are configuring here and we are adding those capabilities and those monitorings to our application. So once again, the app host here is responsible for doing the orchestration. The, the service default is responsible for taking all of these dependencies here. And then we are, um, by uh, using the app host here, we are doing the, the uh, configuration or the orchestration capabilities that's going to facilitate the configuration between the projects, okay? And the other projects, they are quite simple. You can open here a program.cs. You can see that we just have like a weather forecast method. This is pretty, pretty much known from Microsoft samples, right? And on the web application, we are doing the same thing. But I would like to mention some nice things here. Do you remember that we set here in the app host, we have the name API service, right? And take a look here. If you go to the web application program.cs, you can see that we are referencing that same name. So once again, um, our application is being uh, handling like the project as components. And then what .NET Aspire is doing is orchestrating the capabilities and facilitating the communication between them. So that's what's happening here. So let me go ahead, let me start here. And once I start, I wanna go through the application and show you what's happening and what are the benefits and what's new here in .NET Aspire. Well, the application is running, it's loading, taking some time. Um, the services are being exposed and the app host was launched as you can see here. So this is what is really nice about the project. I was personally very, very, very happy about it. So this is what we have. We, we have this dashboard and you can see that that binding or that configuration is showing that we have two projects running. We have the API service and we have the web front end running. And each one of them has our own endpoints 
that are pointing to some sort of port. Here is the weather forecast API, and here is the front end. So I'll go ahead and just click here in some places so we can establish the communication between the services and also the weather information. So what .NET Aspire is doing is somehow acting like a, a, a Docker Compose application, you know, when you specify the Docker Compose file and you create the, the containers together and then it's easier for the development part of it, right? But let me go through here. The, the project session here, this is showing you output logs um, of the projects within your application and you can choose to specify projects or, or whose logs you wish to visualize by utilizing that drop down right here right for specific projects so here we have projects that are running and we have uh two applications running for the api service and for the web application uh the container in this segment the logs from the containers in your application are showcased. If you have like Redis or some other log, you can configure the container as part of the of, of the, the templates to be visible. Okay. Um, and here we have some kind of logs, right? So this is nice because in the in the structured logs, they are presented in a structured manner, like in this table format in this section. And these logs support fundamental featuring, uh, freeform search, and you can do some kind of logging by, by levels like error, critical warnings, information, debugging, just name it, right? Um, another nice thing is the trace capability. It's very nice, like it's, it's from, from the .NET Aspire application. We can see that we have the built-in trace capability and if you would go back to the project the reason for showing that is exactly because in the solution here uh, we are adding the extension and configuring the open telemetry so we have these default open telemetry logger options and everything else in this single application so as long as we are using uh, and using and using the application this is going to generate more and more data that we can visualize in the logs and everything else right uh, and also metrics you can select a service let's say api service or front end and you can get some sort of metrics that is what's happening behind the scenes right like requests uh hosting durations what is the http that you are getting back from the response uh the quest throw connections durations uh if you have some sort of queue so just go ahead do your own uh, visualizing of the project and how things are being worked. I think even though we are still in the beginning of this project, I really think this is a nice approach for Microsoft and I really expecting that the team is gonna e enhance and add more capabilities here. But this was really nice, you know, and especially uh, with the way that they are uh, introducing and doing the development of the project in a really fast pace. Uh, so, this is it. I would like to give you some introduction about it. So uh, once again, if you like it, let me know. Um, if you really are considering to use, let's see the next step of the team. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.